have a special guest with us, Murphy McCann, who is a former utilities analyst at PIMCO and has a background in this sector, both in the public markets and in the private markets. Uh, so before we get started, Murphy, tell the um, audience a little bit about yourself. Well, I, I mean, what's relevant is, uh, again, several years as a utility analyst at PIMCO and um, covering uh, utilities during the mid-2000s, which was uh, challenging from a number of perspectives. Uh, you had a lot of, uh, you know, activity with regard to bankruptcies. You had Pacific Gas and Electric going bankrupt during that time. Um, you had the Enron debacle unfold in ways other than pack gas. And um, so it was an interesting time where you saw, you know, again, that, that's my background. It was a pretty tumultuous time for the sector. Um, and since then, I've, um, I'm actually involved in, uh, you know, off the grid, non-regulated solar projects. Um, so, um, I don't know that that's that's my relevant background to this to our discussion today. Okay, so the first question I have is, how does the current rate environment affect utilities? So, rates do affect utilities, right? There's yield substitution that's you know uh, that's compelling um, for some investors, um, you know, but. Yield is not the only thing that you should consider when looking at utilities. Um, utilities actually, I mean, the, the businesses themselves grow um, over time. They grow as a function of uh, them adding to their rate base, their installed equipment base that you know delivers and generates the electricity. They also grow due to population growth and business growth within their um within their operate, you know, where they have their businesses set up. So um, typically in the utility space, you've got yields of anywhere from three and a half to 5%. Um, and you have, you know, the sector that grows uh, in the high single digits, typically speaking. So you have that, you have that combined return that is, um, that offsets some of what you'll see in uh, fixed income markets um, if you're just purely looking at that. So, um, yeah. Then speaking of the uh, the yield on the XLU is now like over one percent higher than ten year treasury. I mean, lower than lower. Sorry, the ten year treasuries. Uh, however, the last time we've had such a negative spread was right in the wake of the GFC in the mid two thousands, and that ended up being at least a relative bottom for the utility sector. Are utilities likely to get defensive inflows from here or will they fall down so that they are now, so their dividend yield is now at a premium to 10 year treasuries? So um, I think what you're gonna see is uh, the safer names in the space uh, garner more, more activity. Um, you know, utilities, again, the, the return profile, they, they are, they're regulated businesses usually, um, and the sector, depending on what time frame you're looking at, um, the historical numbers don't necessarily give a good indication of, of, of what they'll do today. And what I mean by that is that historically, uh, the utilities have always had, you know, their their safe regulated utility. Um, that utility earns a regulated return on their assets, which means that the state effectively uh, sets the rates on the electricity such that they earn a rate of return on their equity that's invested in that utility. And that's what they turn around to investors. Um, so, um, but what's happened is in various cycles in the past, uh, you know, the non rate, what happens the utility says, okay, well, I'm really good at generating and delivering electricity. I'm also going to uh, do some other energy related businesses that do not earn a regulated rate of return. A classic example of that today is um, Nextera, who operates uh, one of the most successful growing solar non regulated businesses um, in the world. Um, and so 
what happens is, um, you know, when you look through cycles, um, you know, it's not just strictly a spread game. You have to consider what the uh, what the underlying businesses are. And for but to make to to answer your question simply, the regulated utilities, right, the ones that do not participate in other types of businesses, um, those guys, uh, as you go through, uh, you know, like the, you know, any kind of cycle, um, they are a safer play than most other equities. Um, so you will see you will see flows going into some of the safer names in the space. Um, and the, you know, the uncertainty in the economy at times like this tends to punish the non-regulated businesses. Um, and so what, what I've seen in the past is you, you, you'll have a, a period of higher rates and some of the market, you know, a lot of the market will trade down simply because of the discount, you know, the uncertainty related to you know, whether it's a food business or an auto business or whatever, those stocks tend to go down. But then for some reason, utilities eventually end up trading down with them, um, just not nearly as bad. And I would say that the world is bifurcated between the regulated and the, the, the more risky businesses. Um, so are we going to see a huge snapback in utilities right now? Um, there's st I see them peeling off right now. I see, you know, I, I don't know what the magic number is in terms of treasuries that, that makes utilities peel off. But, you know, when the 10 year is up and above four and a half percent, we've seen some reaction to that. Um, it just so happens that a lot of the yields are at the four and a half percent. But, you know, in, investors really need to consider both the growth profile and, and the and the and the yield together. So, um, you know, it. It's it's hard to you know understand exactly when sentiment will turn, but you know I would say that the real regulated utilities are not going to fall as far as fast, not by any stretch, and you know that the, and they will recover at some point um, as people you know take a look at the total return profile on them. And then before we wrap things up, are there any other thoughts you feel um, that investors should care about in the utility space? Well, the biggest one I would look at is, you know, there are some people that are chasing yield, pure yield. And to that end, you know, the utilities, the, the regulated utilities have multi-layer capital structures. Um, the equities that we're talking about, these are the these are the common shares at the parent level. Now, underneath, you have all the operating companies. Um, you know, for Duke, you got Duke Carolinas, et cetera, et cetera. And you can actually buy... There are first mortgage bonds, and there are also um, there are uh, preferreds that are at the level of the opco. So um, very close to you know much closer to the assets than the common equity um, of the parent, obviously. So um, you know there there can be some really good yield opportunities with within um, the preferreds. Um, I, I I just looked one up real quick. Uh, the ticker was ETI. This is not. This is not an endorsement of, of ETI specifically, but you know the yields are in the high fives, almost six percent right now, um, and you're down at the utility opco. You know you're buying that preferred at a price of twenty two and change, uh, where par is twenty five. So you have a little bit of upside. You don't have the same upside as the utilities, but again, I think sometimes the uh, the opco preferreds can be a good place for. Um, for people to chase yield.